today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't use callback functions, at least not for now, with Query AI. So originally the topic of this video was going to be showing you how you could use these callback functions. And all a callback function is in Query AI is basically as your task, once your task finishes with whatever you tell, tell it to do, at the end you have this field called callback where at the end of this task, you can get those results and you can do something with them, right? And basically, it'll call this function, that's what's called a callback function, at the end of the task to do whatever, whatever it is you want to do with them. Here in this quick example, you see that, you know, once this task finishes, you get this callback function, which they just called callback function. And up here, this callback function, all it does is it takes the output and then it just prints out uh, task completed, it prints out what the task description was, as well as the task output. Simple as that. The main point of this is just to do something at the completion of a task, and you can tune that however you want. But again, for that, you probably need a little bit of programming knowledge, of course. So, I mean, but that's the point, right? Usually with these career AI agents, as they're talking to each other, you really can't stop them until they finish up the entire job. So that's why I'm assuming that's why you set that up. So the way I was working at this was I was kind of working on a I was working on a project that I found on YouTube. I was looking through some of the videos of Code with Brandon. He has a lot of great stuff that I really like and that I can learn from because I wanted to spend some time explaining that to all of you guys because I know something I like to focus on is breaking this down, making it as simple as possible. I even had my little lucid chart over here. I was gonna draw some arrows, some diagrams and take you all through that. But again, at the end of the day, I was gonna have to spend quite a bit of time talking about the code in Korea. And then I was gonna have to spend a little bit of time as far as why I was gonna why I was gonna write out the code the way I was for that callback function. And that would have taken some time but something I started to notice was after I ran the project from the other from the other repository I found on GitHub, I was able to run perfectly. But then when I tried running it on mine, it just wasn't working. So I started, you know, looking at looking at it over and over again, trying to fix it. And finally I started, you know, looking into Google and GitHub. And I start seeing these posts on the Cray AI page about callback functions not firing, about you know, it it just wasn't working for some people. And if you go to GitHub to any repository, you can click this section here called issues. And here these are basically you know concerns or things that people have found about a certain repository that might be causing an issue for them. Now, if they're still in open, it means that they either haven't been fixed or they haven't really been addressed yet. And once I start looking through them, like I said, this is exactly what's going on. It said callbacks that in Korea are not initialized. So basically whenever, you know, the tasks were running, these functions that were inserted in there weren't being called. And that's exactly a problem that I was having. And the reason why I saw that it was, it was working for other projects is not mine was I started to see that on those other projects, they were running on older versions of Crew AI while on mine, I had set it to the newest one. Now, I think for somebody that may not have, you know, had too much experience working with these kind of projects, they might've been very tedious. So I'm going to show you the workaround that is actually a lot easier than making a callback function that you can do for your projects, for your tasks, and it's literally just one line of code. So all you have to do on any test that you have, here we're looking at the tasks.py file. This is where I have all my tests written out for my crew. The one thing I wanted this test to do, I just call it markdown styling, was this task was basically gonna take the results from the previous task from the previous agents and it was going to format it to give some really nice markdown formatting so all markdown is is basically a format the formatting that you need so that you can have things look really nice in in applications like notion so all you have to do literally is just write this line it's just output underscore file and then equals to whatever you want to call your file name so at the end of this task, all that's going to happen is it's going to take your results, which you usually see in here anyway, and it's going to output them into a file. And as you can see out here, that's what it populated, formatted.md. And all these tasks right here are, you know, these little asterisks. That's what makes it nice in Notion. So let me just show you real quick. So again, if we take this file, we're going to copy it. We're going to paste it into a Notion document right here. And there you have it. You have your output from, from your career project with the nice headlinings, the nice bolding, and again, a very 
very nice and organized with its bulleted list. So at this point, you can just do whatever you want with this document. You want to send it on an email. You want to share with people, whatever you want. That's already pretty much formatted. I mean, ready to go, right? So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, I just want to share that with you, that really neat feature that you have on Cree AI. So all you have to do if you want to output your file is just the simple line output underscore file at the end of your task. So this will save a file called whatever you want to call it once it finishes it. And I think this just goes kind of like as a lesson for me that I shouldn't spend too, mu too much time doing the complicated thing when there's an easier solution all along. And, you know, I think that's something I've been trying to emphasize to other people about learning AI tools and just trying to find the easier way to do something. And then here I am kind of making my life complicated. I think I spent like, you know, two, three hours, probably more trying to prepare myself to how I was going to explain that for that video. And at the end of the day, there was a way easier solution that was you know easier for me and it's definitely gonna be easier for you guys but just like everyone else guys i'm still learning i also really want to thank all of you for the positive feedback that i've been getting in the comments in the discord channel as well as with the one-on-ones that i've had with some of you guys again if there's something you have a question about something that you want more information on as far as how you can apply ai or crew ai to your business or to other process that you have feel free to join my discord join my facebook group and message me and again in the description i have a calendly link where you can book a one-on-one one session with me completely free it's gonna be 30 minutes you know and i try to be as flexible as i can with that schedule because i know everybody's in different time zones thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one